Good morning. We're the Theory Open News Network. Today we are here to talk about the Nevada Senate and Nevada's 4th Congressional District. First off, we're going to look at some of the political history. Specifically, we can see that Nevada as a state was generally more Republican in the past, but with the rise of Barack Obama, it became Democratic, but recently it has more shifted towards even. Looking at the district specifically, it has been represented by a Democrat in all the Congresses since 2010, except for one. And that shows that it's more Democratic leaning on average than a whole. Now, the demographics of the state, uh, in 2010, the whites had a 54% share of the demographics, where now they have a 46.6% as of 2021. And the Hispanic population has grown in Nevada as well. We look at the district, and the Hispanics have an even higher share of the demographic, which could affect turnout rates in the district, um, which also goes along with Nevada being the least, one of the least educated states. Looking at some of the popular figures and organizations, we can see that Stephen Horsford doesn't list any people in terms of endorsements on his website, but he has a lot of organizations, including Planned Parenthood Action Fund on Emily's list. His opponent, Sam Peters, has a lot of out-of-state people, including Paul Gosar and Sid Miller, but he has a former governor's endorsement, which is Robert List. But at the same time, he's more establishment in the sense that he has the endorsement of the National Republican Party. In terms of the Senate, Catherine Cortez Masso has a lot of big name endorsements, including Barack Obama and Bernie Sanders, who both did well in the state. In terms of organization, she has the support of the Culinary Workers Union, which will be crucial to her success because it formed the backbone of Harry Reid's campaign. In terms of the Senate, Laxalt is endorsed by Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump, and at the same time, he's endorsed by various crime organizations, including the Nevada Fraternal Order of Police, since crime is a major issue. Looking at some of the polling analysis, as of the 7th of October, Laxalt has led by about 1.7%. And this is significant because Masto is below the 50% an incumbent generally requires, which is a big warning sign to her campaign. In terms of the 4th District, there hasn't been much polling, but again, Stephen Horsford is below 50% and all the polls are within the margin of error. Now, looking at the money uh, in the Senate race, we can see that Cortez Masto has, is nearing the 4 to 1 ratio compared to her opponent, Adam Laxalt, which could get uh, into some troubling territory as the incumbent. And similarly, in the House seat, we have Stephen Horsford nearing you know, a four to one ratio, which again, may not be good, although he hasn't spent it all yet. Now the debate analysis, the Senate, is the, uh, the Senate race is the only Senate race without a debate in this 22 cycle, which we'll see how that affects uh, come polling time. And House seat four, uh, Horsford seemed a little needy for the vote, which as an incumbent may not be a good sign, whereas Peters looked as more of an establishment Republican, which may turn off voters uh, come election day. Looking at some of the campaign platforms, Stephen Horsford is very similar to a generic Democrat in the sense that he supports abortion, affordable housing, and immigration. Sam Peters is more like a generic Republican in the sense that he supports a balanced budget, but at the same time he wants to end illegal immigration and lower taxes. Catherine Cortez Masso has put a little bit more emphasis on healthcare and the fact that she supports law enforcement since crime is a major aspect. But at the same time, abortion has been a major issue in the state. Nevada has a 24 week limit, but she has hammered Laxalt in the sense that Laxalt supports zero exceptions to abortion. Laxalt, on the other hand, has emphasized crime due to Catherine Cortez Masso's support for no cash bail and at the same time her support for higher inflation because Nevada has one of the highest inflation rates in the nation. Looking at some of the campaign controversies, we can see that Stephen Horsford was discovered to have a decade-long affair with an ex-Senate staffer. This was discovered in 2020, but there wasn't much media attention. Now it has become a major topic. At the same time, he's accused of using staff and resources to make a YouTube video for his son's channel for monetary profits. Peters, on the other hand, even though he's a balanced budget guy, took a $72,000 PPP, PPE loan while running for office. In terms of the race predictions, Nevada would be a very nail-biter in our opinion. We can see that Laxalt wins by about 1.9%, and that is because of Hispanics, uh, him winning a greater percentage of Hispanics. But at the same time, the white vote is set to increase because African Americans generally do less, uh, turn out less in the midterms. In terms of the fourth congressional district, we also see that the winner would be Sam Peters, all by, by a lower margin, about 0.5%. And this is because of the national environment. And as you can see, uh, Vegas has shifted very much towards the right, and the top of the ticket is extremely strong, which can help down ballot effects. Thank you for your time.